next up we have Maxim Maden Medensky. Um, would you like to try to share your screen? All right, thank you. <clears throat> so I, um, I am going to be presenting uh, this uh, talk on uh, spatial transformations and convolutional neural networks. And this is a joint work with Ilva Janssen, Lucas uh, Finveden, and Tony Lindberg from the Kote Ha Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm. So first, let's start with an overview. What is the issue that we are going to be addressing? So the problem is to make uh, convolutional neural nets invariant with respect to spatial transformations of their inputs. So I'll go into more details a little bit later about what this means. Uh, but uh, the thesis that has been proposed in uh, one of the influential papers uh, a few years back is to use uh, so-called spatial transformer networks, uh, abbreviated STNs, uh, to undo the transformations of the inputs. And so the antithesis, which I will be kind of focusing on uh, today, is the uh, observation that transforming features uh, later in the layers of the network actually does not undo input transformations and cannot do this in a very uh, kind of robust sense. And so while well, this maybe presents a certain problem and uh, the synthesis developed kind of in the follow-up paper um, with of my other co-authors co is that one can uh, use this understanding to develop a another framework where you transform inputs, but you learn how to transform them uh, by using the features later in the network. So let's go a little bit in, the, in more detail. So uh, invariant neural networks here uh, denoted by this uh, uh, phi uh, is uh, just some, something that takes in uh, a signal, in this case, an image. Uh, and outputs uh, and a collection of signals uh, or features uh, that we then use for downstream tasks. And uh, it will be invariant uh, precisely when, if you apply some transformation to the inputs, here it's a rotation, uh, we take our image and rotate it, and the result is the same uh, as before and after transformations. So here, uh, in the formula and uh, uh, X is some kind of input and uh, G is uh, an element of some group of transformations and the TG is the particular transformation uh, that we are considering. So the advantages of uh, neural nets that are invariant is that they have fewer parameters and uh, they don't require as much complexity for learning. So you might not need to do like data augmentation by artificially introducing these transformations and so on and so forth. So it uh, may, may give you a better performance. Um, so what has been proposed by Yaderberg in a 2015 paper is that uh, we use uh, so the special transformer networks um, that are organized uh, as presented here in the paper. Uh, you have a localization net, which actually tries to learn the parameters for the transformation that you're using. So for example, if it's really a linear, trans a linear transformation, so it's some kind of matrix. So you need to know, maybe if it's a rotation matrix, you parameterize your space and you learn that. And then you have a, a kind of a small sampler or grid generator, which uh, a kind of, in a sense, takes the, the usual lattice of pixels and transforms it according to your transformation and samples from there to effectively perform the transformation. And so, um, yes, uh, so this is what they do. And they were introduced as a, an option to, to try to get CNNs that learn invariance with respect to these image transformation. And uh, spatial transformer network is a, is a network with one or several or spatial transformer modules. And these uh, can be inserted at arbitrary depths in the network. So uh, the problem with this is that in fact, transforming inputs and transforming uh, outputs uh, are not really inverse to each other. So this is uh, here an illustration of this. Uh, I have my image uh, I, uh, for, for a single convolutional operator. I kind of have this, uh, uh, if I start on the right upper corner and I uh, go first transform it by say rescaling, I'm now in the left upper corner and then I convolve it with a filter, uh, I'll get something. And then I try to undo this transformation and rescale back. This will not be the same in general as just starting with the image and just going down by the convolution. Uh, so I remarked that this would work if the, the filter itself was transformed. Uh, and this is kind of uh, one of the 
this idea can be used to actually solve this problem as well. But uh, as, 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 as given here, this diagram does not commute. So that these operations are not inverse to each other. Uh, so uh, despite this problem, both the original paper that proposed this and, and a fair number of follow-up papers uh, apply these uh, ST units to feature maps. And uh, on the bottom line, I have this uh, um, uh, picture from the original paper where you can see that the spatial transform uh, units are interspersed with convolutions uh, with an attempt to, you, to learn the street, um, street number, uh, the, you know, one of these 260 things. Um, so this has been uh, used. Uh, and so let me uh, go into why this doesn't work and in what sense we have proved that this doesn't work. So this is a, in some sense, the reason fairly straightforward. So, but we have, we work with a continuous model of the convolution neural net. We start with a signal, which is a function from Rn in the image sense case, it's uh, n equals to two. And we uh, work with uh, RGB images, let's say we could do uh, different color channels uh, as well, but uh, this will not affect the argument. And technical assumption that this, uh, uh, this, this signal is a function that belongs in a particular functional space that we need to, for the things to be nice. And the filter is a, also uh, a function, but in a, you know, in a, in a compactly supported. So it, it's a kind of, a, you know, of course, in, in practical terms, of course, that's true. You, you cannot have an unbounded filter represented in a computer memory. So uh, then the convolution operator is uh, fairly standard and was, in fact, what we saw in the picture before. You'd overlay your shifted maybe image and you uh, see how much strength of the signal you get. Uh, and we observe that this uh, convolution operator transforms uh, signals to other signals. And so, uh, you know, uh, well, rather features to features. So this can be go further down the streams. So now you're applying this to features. Okay. So uh, this is a single convolution and uh, one layer of the convolutional network is actually going to be applying to a vector of features where you have in a sense a um, two-step two procedure. So first you convolve within a, with a, say in a sense a matrix of uh, filters to get a new vector of features, uh, you know, with these H's, what I call them. So these are not exactly the features yet, but they will become at the next step when we apply the nonlinearity. So we add some bias terms and then we apply a standard function like a ReLU or, uh, you know, 10H or whatever it is that you want. And so then the full network is just a composition of such layers, such convolution layers and uh, functional composition. Okay. So uh, what about the spatial transformations and invariants? You start with a linear map, uh, that is your, your transformation. And then you define the, you, you look at how it operates on the, on the signal spaces. Uh, and this is the usual contragradient uh, technically representation where you have to apply the in inverse. It's a little confusing always with the inverses there, but my best explanation is that uh, if your image rotates to the left, then you can have to tilt your head. Uh, um, it's the same as if you tilted your head to the right. So this is somehow you're, you're moving in the opposite direction. Anyways, so th this is the correct uh, uh, action of the transformations on the signals. And then the question is, you know, suppose I first apply this transformation, then pass it through the neural net versus I pass it to the neural net. Can I undo this effect by applying the transformation to the results? So this K is somewhere in the middle of, the, of my uh, multi-layer network. Can I insert this uh, spatial transformer there and hope that this will correct for the uh, change in the image that I had? So is the correcting uh, transformation on the features exist? And so the single layer, uh, or even before applying nonlinearity, which is pretty much equivalent to the, <clears throat> the convolution behavior is, is pretty straightforward. There is nothing. Uh, surprising there, we have the behavior of the convolution with respect to the, the equivariance with respect to these transformations. And we see that uh, when we kind of conjugate by this transformation, we uh, try to undo this, then in fact, we get a convolution with a different filter. And this filter is uh, a transform of the original filter. And so uh, it's not very large step from there to, to conclude that the only way that this um, some, some kind of transformation undoes the input transformation is that in fact it is the inverse and the filter 
that, that is the transformed filter is in fact identical with the original filter. So that's what we say that the filter is invariant. Uh, but this is very restrictive uh, because um, in fact, this implies that the transformation may, must be uh, essentially in some coordinates, a rotation or a reflection. And then this rotation or reflection could have a finite uh, order. So if I you do it many, many times, either I get identity at some point, and then this is just a finite group of transformations and lambda has to be invariant to this finite number of, uh, so maybe it has a kind of a, a n -fold, fold symmetry going around or something. Or if it's uh, actually a uh, non-finite order uh, rotation or reflection, then lambda has to actually be constant on some family of, of ellipses. So it's a very kind of non-interesting filter in some sense. So only kind of trivial filters and only for these kind of uh, non-hyperbolic or these kind of uh, rotational uh, transformations can be, can be, could this work? Um, and uh, in fact, uh, the slightly more interesting perhaps case is that the same, uh, a similar thing works in the multi-layer case. So this is the theorem that if we have a, um, uh, a, a neural net such that it can be, uh, it's, it, 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 the transformation of its input can be undone by a transformation of its output, then first of all, the, the transformation that is undoing the, this, uh, this thing is, is the inverse of the transformation that you started with, which this is just uh, what you would expect. Uh, but moreover, if this neural net is not a constant, meaning it sometimes produces a, a different output than uh, 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 than, than what you would get on the zero inputs, then in fact, this uh, uh, thing is a, a conjugate to orthogonal matrix as, as well. So it's a, in some coordinates, it's a rotation. So for example, those uh, um, transformations that have any eigenvalue of non-unit size, and I mean uh, complex eigenvalue, they cannot be undone by a feature map transformation. Uh, Right, so uh, the proof uses uh, and kind of uh, key properties of convolutional neural nets. So one is that they're continuous, meaning if I change the input a little bit, then the outputs change a little bit. So in some topologies, uh, they are translation covariant. So in fact, this uh, we are here we're talking about uh, linear operators, uh, not affine ones. So the the translation is not included. Uh, but if you do just use translation, then in fact, uh, this, uh, this is perfectly undoable at any level by just translating the features back. And uh, the third property is what we call semi-locality, uh, which basically says that if you have two signals that agree on a large ball, on a large subset of your uh, input, then uh, the transformed uh, features will also agree uh, at least at a point. And if you increase the size of the ball together with the property two, it actually implies that they will also agree on a, on a, on some ball as well. So not just at, at a point, but uh, you know, and these radius, radii are related. So uh, we show that CNNs uh, kind of have all these properties. And then we show that any, in fact, any operator that has all these properties, uh, uh, for any such operator lambda k, the theorem that you see in the top of the slide will also be true. So all you need is these three properties. And in fact, uh, the proof is uh, not uh, super difficult. Uh, and I can try to give you some flavor of it. So first we uh, introduce this, uh, what we call generator uh, of the network, which is uh, just a, a transformation that transforms the input not into another uh, kind of signal type thing, but just to the, the value of that at the origin. And because of the translation covariance, this is actually fully determines what the, what the neural net will do. You know, if we have the data of, of, of what this generator is for every input, then we know what the neural net would output for every input. And now we say, oh, suppose now that uh, this uh, neural network is kind of undoable. This means that in a sense, the, the mu, again, I'm sketching here and you can, if, you, if, you, if you're interested, I can say more or you can look at the paper. If mu uh, uh, outputs, uh, uh, if, the, if the neural net is undoable, then 
uh, kind of uh, then this mu will be invariant to uh, to these transformations. So I I can look at the input. Then by some locality, the, all these properties that I talked about they transfer to this generator. Uh, I can cut off my signal and restrict it to some ball uh, uh, in in the input space. And then by invariance, uh, the result of the, of the of mu has to be the same as if I apply the transformation. And below you see kind of the support of the signal. And in the case where I have a hyperbolic, uh, this is just for illustrative purposes, uh, hyperbolic operator T, meaning it squeezes a certain direction and, and stretches the other, then the support becomes smaller. Then again, I apply semi-locality and this uh, support is now actually small. And then for a large enough n, this, this becomes smaller and smaller. And by continuity, uh, the whole thing goes to zero. So mu on the f has to be the same as mu on the zero signal. So this is, uh, you know, uh, maybe in this uh, sketchy way is not very difficult, but uh, the, the, we, we have managed to abstract these properties and, uh, and prove this in, in, in quite a general setting. So uh, again, to, to repeat, the problem was how to make the CNNs invariant to spatial transformations. So this proposed method we have now demonstrated doesn't really work. Um, and then, so what to do? And with the proposal is to transform the inputs, but learn from the features. So what, what does it mean? Well, uh, what you have presented here is uh, uh, the various uh, possible architectures for the uh, CNNs using these transformer units, me meaning the localization is, remember is the lock is for learning uh, what transformation to do. And the ST is to actually uh, applying this transformation. And the, the simplest thing is just put it to get right away at the input. This is okay. The second one is to put it in after some convolutions. This actually doesn't work so well. And the proposed solution is to actually uh, utilize the later features to learn what transformation to, to do. So to put this lock later in the network and either has its own convolution layers or share parameters with the convolution layers of the network itself, but apply the resulting transformation to the images themselves. And so uh, my co-authors have verified this in, in, in experiments. Uh, so here you see some uh, results on the MNIST uh, test sets. And you see that, that as predicted by the theory uh, for the translation, there isn't really uh, that much uh, difference, uh, but for the, for, for, the, uh, um, for the rotation and the scaling transformations, the particularly the C1, uh, um, uh, for rotation specifically, C1 uh, architecture gives a deterioration of performance while the shared parameters and this uh, a later, uh, th this alternative architectures improve the performance. Uh, they've also performed some uh, further experiments uh, on uh, other data sets about which you can read in the uh, papers here. And if you wanna, mm, you have, want to discuss any of this, uh, this is how the way to contact me or my uh, co-author. All right. Thank you for that. Um, do we have any questions from the panelists or the audience? I do. Go ahead. Um, so thank you. I was uh, I, I wanted to understand a little bit better, particularly your proposal in the uh, last two slides or so. Um, so if I'm trying to achieve equivariance to in-plane translations, I can achieve that with convolutions without any uh, nonlinearities. Yes. It, well, it, yes. I right. wanted to achieve uh, invariance with respect to in-plane rotations and scalings. I yes. could transform the image to polar coordinates and then use convolutional filters because uh, rotations become translation after I do the, the polar coordinates. And so uh, what I wa was trying to make the point is that there exist specific geometric transformations for which I want to achieve invariance for which there are nonlinearities that are suitable for it. Uh, so more generally, what I was trying to understand is uh, how do you put together uh, cases for which I know that I can achieve the nonlinearities that I need to use to achieve the equivariance versus the cases for which I don't know. Because if I wanted to do this jointly, like 
rotation, sorry, translation in the plane as well as rotation and yes. scaling simultaneously. Yes. That can I cannot do right because I, I need to. Yeah. So how do I do it together? It was not clear to me. Yeah, so uh, I think what you're describing is uh, passing to a coordinate system that's adapted to your transformation uh, that you're yes. willing to want to perform. And then, uh, then the convolutions, you know, convolution does the translation of the filter matching it with the, with the signal. So of course, if you're doing translations in the Cartesian coordinates, that is not the same as doing translations in the polar coordinates. So the, the operations of convolution in polar coordinates are of course not the same as the operation of convolutions in the Cartesian coordinates. So it's sort of a little bit of a different question. What we are looking is just not using coordinate transformations in that sense, but always still sticking with the convolutions in Cartesian um, uh, and uh, then trying to, um, rather than uh, you, you using the adapted coordinate system after which everything becomes in fact equivariant and, and nice uh, to cure this, uh, uh, this, uh, this, let's imagine that our input is pre-transformed. We want to just untransform it beforehand. So we learn like our neural network has to learn for every image uh, somehow like it's sort of like making it a canonical pose, right? The, it learns uh, for every image what to do to it. Uh, to, you see in, in these proposed architectures, the, the spatial transformer will un, un, undo the transformation, uh, which is in a way that is specific to this, uh, this input that, that it has received. So we are not using, uh, we're not changing to any coordinate system. We are not doing anything like that. We're just saying, we look at the image, we process it through some of these layers. And uh, we have learned through training to decide how this uh, input image has to be un, un, unprocessed, sort of unrotated, unscaled, so that then when we put it through the, the rest of the network uh, or put it through again through the layers, then we, we, we get uh, our, our, um, our predictions and our features from that. So, um, uh, and, and this works for arbitrary uh, collections of transformations because it's all adaptive to, to the input that we are, we are receiving. Uh, of course, if I know a priori that my uh, transformations are coming from just rotations that, or if they're coming just from rescalings, then I could choose the coordinate system uh, that way. But here, this is all unnecessary. I can use any, any transformations. In fact, I can even use nonlinear transformations and so on. So uh, any warping, anything like this uh, should in principle be addressable precisely because this transformation is inserted right after the image is received and uh, what we do to it is learned. I don't know if this, does this address your question? Yes, thank you. Okay. Great, uh, so to keep on time, let's uh, keep um, question, any remaining questions for, you know, asking around Gather Town or, you know, in person after. So thank you, Maxim, again, for the excellent informative talk.